find the child. That's I guess that's the part I don't I don't know. It happens. It just happens out of pure grace. And yet, I think you can do it by by learning that there is a third state of being. I do think it can come if you understand there is there is a third state of being, and it isn't what the non-duality people are preaching, or or at least our our image of it, or that precept of it, um, that precept of what non-duality preaches. I, it's like the same with the Christian thing. It's like we got the words wrong. We translated it wrong. We're looking for something that we've translated that isn't there. It's it's a completely different thing. It's almost with me with the non-duality thing, what they're talking about, and what I found, complete opposites. Complete opposites. It isn't about getting rid of anything. It, it, it's about abundance and beauty, and, and it's sensual, and it's alive, and it, it's in the world, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's very material, but it isn't a, a sort of uh, possession of material. It's a love for the beauty that God is, and you're just, you're just immersed in a, in a world of, in a beautiful world, a heavenly place, and it's real. It's real. <laughs> anyway, there's my lecture. There you got it. No, you're not done yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, one thing I want to bring up uh, that came to mind, there's a scripture that sort of captures that, I guess Bill said you need the darkness to see the light. It's just pure contrast. Even even the absolute can't know it is unless it's got some con- contrast that it isn't. And at the highest level, you could say we got the absolute, which is that's that's the the real nothing or void. But it also is the potential to be everything. So it isn't really nothing from a relative standpoint. Again, even those words, emptiness and nothingness can be quite sacred, and silence and stillness can be quite sacred, depending on how you twist the meaning of the words, basically. But ultimately, there's there's nothing, and it vibrates, so we got vibrating nothing, or really vibrating daddy becomes mommy, and then you got all this creation. It's, you know, it's full, it's alive, and it's trying to express from the inside out at every possible point, basically. But it's a, you need the shadow to know you're there because we can't see ourselves directly. It's like look, trying to look behind your eyes right now when you're looking forward. Uh, what's in there is really everything you're seeing, but that sounds sort of mystical, but it isn't actually. But that's very true, and that's how the child feels. The sure. child feels like he's living without, well, kind of like Harding would say, you know, without your head in a way. Yes. It's like you are everything you're looking at. Only you don't define it. You know, that's what's so interesting is uh, the words just, and, and they say that all the time, words don't tell you, but but the words are so difficult because you are being it, and there aren't any words that can quite describe how how whole this, this is, how all-inclusive it is, because I'm, you know, I can say, well, having no head, and then somebody thinks it's always like, well, if you have no head, then you're not there. But no, I am here. I'm so here. I'm even more here than I ever was. I'm so in touch with myself. I'm so, I'm so, I, I'm actually so in love with myself. I mean, I, I cherish who I am. And it's like, it's like, but I'm part of the scenery, you know? It's like, <laughs> I, I, I cherish my beautiful new couch, too. <laughs> you know? It's like, yes, let me go throw myself on that beautiful new couch, and, 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 I, and I just, everything is so, uh, there's nothing left out. It's like, it's like, it's like you get to be everything you always wanted to be. You don't have to give up something. That's what's so interesting, is once you have given it all up and sort of like died to everything, you are resurrected and become again this all inclusive presence of your of yourself that has given up that that has everything now it's like you're given everything and there's you and there's others and there's love and there's music and there's there's just this is the sunshine and the birth and life and and friends and 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 it it's all here and you can love all of it. I mean, you don't have to be going. Oh, that's 
materialistic or oh that's egotistical or oh that's rude or oh that's you're totally free <laughs> you are totally you're fearless and and why wouldn't you be because when all is all what is there to be afraid about and i swear it's another world i have i've like drifted off into camelot or whatever that uh you know that uh, that world of that other world, Wonderland or, or Peter Pan or something, I'm just going, wow, this is, this is what they were talking, this is what Bill was talking about. And I was talking to somebody the other day who called me, and he was asking me something about my relationship with Bill and all, and I, I was telling him that Bill wrote me, I mean, you know, I saw Bill several times, but, but he also wrote me personal letters because back then we didn't have emails. And I was reading him some little excerpts from the personal letters, and I'm an, I have a list, a long list of things that Bill said to me that he knew I was going to find this, and now I'm realizing why he gave it to me. He knew I was going to find it. I didn't. He knew I would. Oh, my God. I just go, wow, how did he know? And now that I truly have, it's like I can't hold it back. I just cannot keep it in. I have to just be right out there. And somebody else told a friend of somebody of a somebody that that I was very arrogant. Well, they didn't know me, you know. They only were reading things, and I don't know where they got this idea. And I just thought, you know, I may come off as arrogant, but, but that's okay. I'm going to have to because I have not an ounce of arrogance in me. It's all right, you know. You can think what you want. But, but the beauty of this that's what I want to give. I mean, my heart just wants to give, and you can destroy me in the process, and it may happen, but but I'm just going to give it. I'm going to give everything I can, and I don't even know how I'm going to do it, but maybe maybe just talking to you and, and, and telling you and telling others and telling the guy that called the other night and telling people that write to me and, and getting my book out there and... and um, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna share what I can. Oh, that's all I can do is just give what I can, and I'm not gonna be afraid to do it. And I've been afraid for a long time because it sounds, it. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it's like it's like not until I completely found the fullness of this could I really, could I really speak up. I mean, now beyond a doubt. But I did. I did my work. I tested it. I did my work. I lived my. I lived what I found, and. Uh, uh, I have the right to do this, so that's what I'm, I, I know I do. It's, uh, it comes from a higher place, and I'm going to do it. Okay, not a lot of points. What I'm going to try to do is fill in some uh, technical points for the uh, intellectual theologians of us here. Play off any of these that, that come up. The first thing, Bill himself said that when, when you hear the child... Uh, we're really talking, as, as you said, the one you were before 15 months, two years, when you finally started saying no and sort of drank the uh, world's Kool-Aid of um, I'm a separate, long-lasting individual entity, and we've been operating on that premise. That's the stage, too. But I think the point that needs to be uh, made here uh, is that Bill basically said the child, uh, Christ in you from a Christian standpoint, which is very seldom preached, by the way, at least in my experience, an awareness of being without a subject or object. In other words, seeing without a seer or seeing is what you're really talking about. And that's sort of what Harding is talking about. When you look, uh, look straight ahead and look down and you see your body hanging off this space, and that space is full full of everything else. Well, the space is energy, and what you're seeing are states of energy. It isn't that they are other than you, but when you make them substantial objects in and of themselves, you make you, at least from a mental standpoint, then you feel that way, and you've got this fundamental alienation and relativity that we're dealing with where we're, we're really schizophrenic, where I'm being... Uh, uh, in obviously a world that I know is being, and it's being afraid of being, and ultimately I'm afraid of myself. Well, yeah, exactly. We are. We're afraid of ourselves, which is life itself. And I, if if I can get this book out there, my book is. Uh, it really isn't a. Le I'm not teaching anything. I'm not teaching anything linear, conceptual, 
what I'm doing is I'm writing a love letter to life. Love it. Because life is my lover, and that's what happens. And you just go, oh, my God, I am totally in love with my lover, and my lover is totality itself. And you're going, how can I miss? <laughs> how can I miss this? It's like I get to be, you see, you see, when we start talking about energies and vibrations, we, we're, or again, it gets it gets sort of abstract, and it isn't just energy and vibration. It's this world. It's this beautiful, beautiful, tangible evidence that we're living. And maybe it's all made out of vibrations, but I don't care what it's made out of. I know what I love, and I know the. Um, how could you say it? I know the light behind it for sure, and I know that the things are not it. It's like, how can I, the child mind, the child state of awareness can literally, actually, it, it is like a third level because it can see both at once, absolutely can see both at once. And I know in the, in the, uh, conceptual mind that's nearly impossible. People just cannot see two things at once. At this third place, you do. And that's, you see them both at once. They're both distinct. They're both clear. They're both right there, but they're both with you. They're both, they're both one. And yet, they both are what they are, and you see them both at the same time, but you don't even have to think about it. It's like not even, I don't even have to think about that. I just know the bothness of it. And so it can be really embraced because there is absolutely no, no place and nothing between me and this world, so what would be there to fear, just like you said, except to fear totality? You, you can't possibly fear totality. That's not possible. So it's, it's a state. It's a state. They are right. They are right. It is like a, it is like, um, it's a state of being that is it is beyond transcendent. I, that's what they use the word, transcend. It transcends. It truly transcends. But the beauty of it is it's still here. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't transcend. It doesn't, it doesn't leave out anything in that transcendence. It includes. It includes even more so. And, and even more so, everything just... Everything is bursting with beauty. That's the amazing thing to me. Maybe my, my artistic heart, I don't know, but everything is alive. Everything has heart and soul and depth and power and beauty. And I mean, everything is just twinkling and lit up. It's like, it's like the world sparkles and you're just going, uh, and people sparkle. You know, I run a store and I have customers that walk in. I swear I love them all. I mean, they're just, they're just beautiful. And, and they are all sparkling and they are, they, they are all, I see, what do I see? I, I can't even tell you what I see. I just see love and, and they're so charming and delightful and they can talk about, you know, the price of something or, I mean, they don't have to talk philosophy to me. I don't have to hear one word about non-duality. It's just so beautiful seeing the laughter and the smile and the joy of people just being and and touching their hearts so that they're not all bogged down, you know, and all. I see them actually kind of almost let let go of their their worries and their fears when they walk in my store. It's like, wow, you can almost see a drop away because people are burdened.